Hey, free to play gang, welcome back to another video. Now, Alolan is everything that Javid was supposed to be and more. So, Alolan is actually much better for the current soaring goat Celestial Anomaly than Javid will, will ever be. And this is something that I just happened to discover because of his passive over here. If an enemy makes their allies bleed and early, all of Alolan's ability cooldowns minus one turn, triggers once per turn. This in itself is insanely good for the Celestial Anomaly, which makes him probably, probably one of the best DPS for Soaring Goat. And this is going to be very important, especially moving into the third and final phase where you're going to be up against the Sunken Viper and you're going to need certain Espers to be used in the Sunken Viper that you're going to have to take away from like your earlier first two teams. So it's very important that you get a copy of Alolin via the Championship so they are able to free up at least one slot in your current existing two teams, you know, just like removing certain aspects to use them in the third team and he's gonna fill in that gap very nicely for us now let's take a look at all of his abilities real quick so first skill sting hook attacks one enemy if the enemy is afflicted with bleed deals bleed damage immediately and applies to multiple bleed debuffs then inflicts bleed for one uh, for two turns so this skill in itself will also apply bleed now we just talked about his passive plague famine if an enemy makes their allies bleed and early all of his cooldowns will be reduced by one which is essentially just his third skill here veiled gust Gain stealth for 2 turns, attacks all enemies 3 times damage per hit is 40% of attack and each hit has a 40% chance of dispelling 1 buff from each enemy. So very nice, this is also a buff strip and it also inflicts bleed on each of the 3 hits. So this can apply up to 3 stacks of bleed which lasts for 2 turns each. And finally his captain ability increases attack in point wall and knockout by 30%. And now moving on to his resonances and ascension. So uh, R1, Vilt Gust, final damage plus 10% and R2 when attacking 80% chance ignoring resist. R4, upon successfully dispelling or stealing buffs, inflict max HP, limit minus 3% on the target for each buff dispelled or stolen, so this is very similar to what Chucky has. And R6, Vilgas, his third skill, inflicting bleed cannot be resisted, so he's going to be a little bit better as he progresses through R0 to R6, but it is not essential at all. So R0 is probably where he's good enough, which means in the championship, just prioritize to get at least one copy of him. I think you can buy him for Nexus Crystals. It's going to cost you about maybe upwards of a thousand Nexus Crystals for one copy, but I think it's going to be extremely well worth it. Now, as for his Ascensions, I think it's okay. He has 10% HP, don't really like it that much. He has 7 speed here, which is pretty good. And he has 20% attack, which is very, very nice. Now, let's take a look at why he's so good in the Soaring Goat. So for the Soaring Goat, we're going to be running a team something like this, just to... Make sure that we have enough DPS and a little bit of survivability, that's about it. We're not, we're not going to care too much about our first phase. We're just more focused on the second phase for the time being because of why Alolin is extremely good for this particular fight. Alright, now Zhaoman uses her third skill here and we land some extra bleeding stacks from Camille, who is not our 6 unfortunately. And now we land a lot of extra bleeding stacks here. So it's very important that we have bleeds and the, the reason for that is you'll see in just a little bit. Alright, 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 it's gonna happen soon. It's gonna happen really, really, really soon. We're gonna kill something hopefully right now. Okay, okay, wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Okay, we're gonna kill something hopefully right now. Right about now. Not, not yet. Right about now. Also not yet. Okay, there we go. Plague Famine, that triggered. Did you see that? This is what I'm talking about. So the thing is, when we kill the ads, and if they have bleeding stacks, they will cleanse themselves, essentially, right? They will cleanse themselves when they die. And by doing so, that actually reduces the cooldown of his third skill, of Alolin's third skill over here. So what I'm trying to get at is, he is, ex look at that, he's extremely spammable. You can spam his third skill like crazy, he's gonna, like the moment he takes his turn again, he's gonna use his third skill. So he is, I mean, in a team that is pro maybe a little bit better built than my current team over here, you're gonna be able to like spam a lot of his third skill. You're gonna deal a lot of damage because you're throwing out a lot of his third skills. You're spamming it. So this is probably where he shines at right now in terms of PvE content. I haven't actually really tested him out for PvP, but we can take a look at that in just a little bit. But because I'm in uh, point wall 9 or 10 right now, you see, we are still getting our cooldowns reduced. Uh, because I'm currently quite low on point wall, I'm not able to face off the cleansing comms like Sally comms, R6 Sally comms, J uh, Jinyu Yao comms, all that kind of stuff. But this is just a really nice initial look at why he is so good for the Soaring Goat. Crazy, crazy stuff. He's going to be able to spam his third skill like crazy. All right, there we go. Another cooldown reduction and we throw our third skill again. It's crazy. Every single turn that he takes, he is just going to throw his third skill because there are four enemies here and I haven't actually tried killing all of them at once because my, my DPS is just not, not strong enough. But I wonder what will happen if you kill all four of them at once because his cooldown actually reduces once per turn. So 
If you take out two enemies at once, I'm not super sure that that counts as two different turns or is it just one single turn. So that's also another thing to take note of. But for the most part, if you're able to kill off the ads like one by one, then you should be able to reduce your cooldowns like crazy and he's going to be super effective in this current fight. So it's kind of sad that Alolin was not Javid because if Javid had Alolin's kit, he would be able to spam his third skill a lot better and we, and we will see him being more useful over here, but that is not the case. Alright, now that we have talked about the Soaring Goat, let's take a little glimpse at what Sunken Viper is capable of. And uh, don't be too bothered about the, the Espers that I'm bringing over here, I just basically just chucked in random Espers at this point. So we just want to take a look at all of the Sunken Viper skills and just what we should be looking out for. So uh, his first skill, Tail Swing, attacks all enemies, damage 80% of attack, damage scales with the level of Monstrous Frenzy, which is his ultimate over here, inflicts healing received reduced that lasts throughout combat. So it's a Golden Rim debuff. And if the target speed is lower than Sunken Vipers, inflicts attack down for 3 turns. So it's very important that your speed is higher than the Sunken Viper, but the thing is uh, due to, you know, as the fight drags on, his speed is going to increase and therefore your attack is also going to be uh, decreased eventually. Now, second skill, Raging Flood, attacks all enemies, damage is 100% of attack, damage plus 15% per Snake Venom stack on targets. If a target has at least 3 stacks of Snake Venom, inflicts stun for 1 turn, cannot be resisted, and damage scales with the level of Monstrous Frenzy. So I'm not super sure whether this is preventable by immunity. If it is, then Clara is probably useful here again. And Monstrous Frenzy, cast when Monstrous Frenzy is not at level 0. Attacks targets on all battlefields, damage 300% of attack and inflicts Snake Venom for one turn, cannot be resisted. The number of Snake Venom snacks inflicted scales with the level of Monstrous Fr uh, Frenzy. So uh, this skill right here, if I had it at like level 5, it's going to inflict 5 stacks of it. Which means Raging Flight is going to deal a lot more damage. So it's very important that you reduce the level of Monstrous Frenzy so that the Raging Flight attacks and all that kind of other debuffs that the boss has will be controlled. Now next we have Exhaustion, so cast when Monstrous Frenzy, his ultimate, is level 0. Clears all debuff on himself and gains weakened, basically the damage that he takes is increased by 100%. Uh, it's pretty much the same as Soaring Goat, so in the weakened state, Soaring Goat also takes in 100% extra damage, which is not the case for the Raging Lion. And now Sea Pressure, each time Sunken Viper is afflicted with Tide Rush, Monstrous Frenzy's level minus 1. Dispels 10 stacks of Tide Note from Sunken Viper at the start of his turn, if without Tide Note is damaged plus 100% for one turn. So uh, obviously, Tight Note would be the debuff that we can land onto him. So right now we have 70 stacks of it. And Tight Rush is essentially just 100 stacks of Tight Note. So very similar to the previous few phases, it, it, it kind of works the same way. It's just different kinds of debuffs. And now Engulf, each time the boss gains weakened or cast Monstrous Frenzy, it gains 100% damage boost and extra speed. So this scales the boss a little bit more so that he's harder to uh, gain score after a certain point. And Monstrous Frenzy is level cap plus one throughout. Now, last two passives here, Counterflow, when hit damage taken, minus 5,000 and deals true damage to the attacker and inflicts one stack of Snake Venom on the attacker for one turn, which is crazy. So whenever you attack, you will receive a debuff called Snake Venom. And I mean, it is the same debuff that we have talked about at the start. So this is crazy. Whenever you attack, the boss is actually going to inflict Snake Venom on you, which is going to hurt a lot. And if there are no attackable targets on the current battlefield, cast Monstrous Frenzy to attack all the targets. Yeah, essentially, this is just the ultimate, right? The ultimate goes crazy after It's just a berserk. So essentially, the whole point of Snake Venom is just for Raging Flood. This is what it does. It just increases the damage that Raging Flood does. And that is... I think mostly it, uh, except for this part where he will also land a stun, which also comes from Raging Flood. So that is the main problem with Snake Venom in this fight. Now let's take a look at what Tide Note does. So in battles against the Scorch Messenger and Sunken Viper, gains one stack of Tidal Force at the start of a turn. Esper's attacks consume Tidal Force and each stack deals true damage to the, to the target and inflicts five stacks of Tide Note. True damage is 120% of attack and Tide Collar inflicts 10 stacks of it instead, instead of like five. The Tide Rush effect will be triggered once a Tide Note reaches 100 stacks, dealing damage to the target, which is 10% of the target's max HP, and deals extra damage based on the number of debuffs the target has. So it's very important that you land a lot of debuff onto the boss. And finally, let's take a look at all the Tide Callers over here. It's kind of weird that they are called Tide Callers when everything else is like Imprisoner and Judge, and suddenly we have something called Tide Caller. So Sander is a Tide Caller, Jin Yu Yao, Louis, Teva as well, Brewster, okay, 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 so I see. So now, uh, I think assist attacks, probably, I'm not super sure. Esenath, Stewart, and Anki Chai, very interesting. Anyway, that's it for this video. For the most part, I just want to showcase a Lolin in the Soaring Goat, and eventually I'll test him out in PvP in our global server itself. And hopefully he shines against some of the Jin comms and the Sally comms out there, which I think is probably one of the biggest issues in PvP right now. So that's it, leave your comments down in the comment section below. Hope you guys enjoyed today's content. If you did, don't forget to thumbs up, it really helps the channel, and subscribe for more dislike content. Now that's it, this has been Derry Free to Play, and as always, I will see you in the next video.